some um, what's the word ways to remember if something is there or head. Uh, we'll go into that. The, then we'll have a before that. I think we have a break or after that. Um, then we'll have uh, some words about transport, uh, about traveling, and then you'll do an, a dialogue exercise about that. Uh, then we have the sentence of the week, and then we're done. Unfortunately, busy, busy, busy. Didn't have time to uh, make a quiz this time. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe in the break I'll have time to quickly uh, jot up one, but it depends on how much time we have. So let's get going. Um, well, well, what's also not on here, what we are going to do. Uh, oh, no. First, word van de week. Het word van de week is Utrecht. So repeat after me, Utrecht. Wow, great job. Uh, so emphasis on the U, U, like an E with your lips around it, U. Uh, Utrecht is, of course, the city we live in, but as it is written and pronounced in the local dialect, uh, which is a little bit different, there's no T, and the CH is written with a H. You'll hear this uh, in, like tr in like songs about Utrecht, they always refer to it like this. And uh, the football club uh, supporters also call themselves something related to this word. But uh, I, I do not follow football at all. I just know that about it. Uh, so yes, if you see this word and you think, oh, why do they write it so weirdly? It's the local dialect. Then the homework. And for this, I do need to see you guys. I'm going to tell you that. Um, yes. Great. Okay, so homework. Of course, you did your homework. Um, so for the first homework part, you needed to do some math and write the the solution in English, uh, in Dutch, and then translate to English. But I guess if you are able to solve it, you know what it is in English. Uh, this one is not very interesting, so I'll just go through it and show you the answers. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, 13 plus 5. The first one is 18, 8 min 0, 8, 15 gedeeld door 3 is 5, 4 keer 1 is 4, 30 keer 6 is 36, 90 min 7 is 83, 32 gedeeld door 4 is 8, en 12 keer 2 is 24. Hope that went well for everyone. I think so. Uh, if not, let me know. Um, if you raise your hand, I think, uh, or something, and I don't respond, it's not because I'm ignoring you, because often I don't see it show up. So if you raise your hand and want to ask a question, just unmute yourself and ask it. Normally, Milana will be able to see that, but she is not here. Just FYI. All right, exercise two, uh, you had to conjugate some variations of hebben en zijn, which I also think I told you to do this one. So we'll go through that one as well, although I don't have a, a slide for that. Mm, yeah, I'll go through this one myself and then we will do this one. So this, zij heeft of hebben drie zussen. Uh, zij can mean they or she, so it can be singular or plural, third person. So she has three sisters, or they have three sisters. Two, jullie, mm -hmm, veel huiswerk. It's just jullie, easy, just a plural. Jullie hebben veel huiswerk. You have a lot of homework. That's not true. Uh, uh, maybe it is true, but I don't think for this course. Uh, zij, mm -hmm, elke dag les. So again, zij, is zij heeft of zij hebben elke dag les. They have class every day, or she has class every day. Four. Wij, oh, well, wij zijn 20 jaar oud. We are 20 years old. Ik, mm -hmm, een student. I am a student. Ik ben een student. En dan, mm -hmm, jij in Utrecht. Ben jij in Utrecht. Okay, I hope that went well, because uh, I think that's uh, the other exercise is translation. So before that, I, unfortunately, I do not have a slide for this. So I just implore you to look at your booklet at oefening 2, which I asked you to do last time. And I will ask you, I will just point to people, to do a sentence. And then just 
uh, read the sentence out loud with the correct conjugation. Uh, all right. Uh, Gabriela, could you do, read aloud the first sentence with Hoi? Uh, exercise three. Uh, exercise two, this one. The one from last week that I asked you to do. If you didn't do it, that's fine. Uh, this one? Uh, from the page 10? Yeah, page 10, yes. Yeah, okay. So, Hoi. Ik ben Peter and this is Ming family. Yes, very good. Could okay. you also translate it? Uh, hola, uh, este é o Peter. E essa é a minha família. Ah, sorry, I'm speaking Portuguese. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Right, so now I'm also learning. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> hi, I am uh, uh, this is Peter, and <laughs> it is my family. Yeah, it's very yeah. good. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Gabriela. Um, Christine, could you do this in the sentence after that? Christine? Oh. No? Okay, um, Kelly, could you do the second the sentence after that? Hi, okay, the, the third, second, okay. Uh, ich have, have him brothers, my well, and, and, and this Kari. Yes, very good. Could you translate it? Okay. I have no brothers, uh, but one sister, Karin. Yes, indeed. I don't have uh, brothers, but I do have a sister, Karin. Karin. Very good. All right. Um, Anna, could you do the one after that? So with my father. Yes. Uh, my father is advocate. My mother is uh, le lerare. Yeah, very good. And uh, this it? means my father is a lawyer, I think. Or, um, mm -hmm. And my mother is, yeah, I don't know that word. Yeah, my mother is a teacher. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Very good. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see here now. Uh, Brian, could you do the next one? Yes. Um, so, uh, Karen and Nick have been here. Opa and Oma Bomer and Opa and Oma Hulst. Uh, yes. Could you repeat what you filled in with six, at six? Uh, heaven. Yeah, very good. Yeah. And could you translate it? Sure. Uh, Karen and I have four grandparents. Uh, grandma and Grandpa Bomer and Grandma and Grandpa Hulst. Yes, very good. All right, next. Uh, Samantha. Yeah. Um, my father has his brothers and Susan. Mike have well tantes and homes. One main mother's can't. One say also many have and quote of familia. Yeah, very good. So, um, have, have, and have. Mm -hmm. Could you translate it? Oh. Um, uh, my father doesn't have any brothers or sisters, um, but I have aunts from my mother's side, and mm -hmm. something about a big family, we have a big family, she has a big family, she wanted a big family. Yeah, because she has a big family. <laughs> ah, she has a big family, okay. Yeah, indeed, very good. Um, okay, two, uh, two sentences more. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Mm. Sarah? Sarah? In care per year, um, then we met the Hilde family um, by Opa and Oma Holtz for the 
Quote, we have it in once a year, we and the whole fam and are, we are no, once a year, um, we are with the whole family um, at the grandpa and grandma Holt for um, the big um, yearly reunion. Yeah, perfect. Very good. All right, and the uh, last two sentences could... Um, uh, Afonso, could you do those? Um, uh, that is altijd heel leuk. En jij, heb jij een grote familie? Yeah, perfect. Could you translate? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's always very funny. I'm not sure. Look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and you, do you have a big family? Yeah. Yes, perfect. All right. Good job, guys. Um, because this exercise is very similar to exercise number three, I will just uh, skip that. Oh, uh, Maria, you had a question? Uh, hi. Yes, uh, I would like to ask you to, to read the whole text just for to be sure in, how to pronounce it. Oh, in it. Dutch? Yeah. Is okay. it? All right. Okay, thank you. Uh, hoi, ik ben Peter en dit is mijn familie. Ik heb geen broers, maar wel een zus, Karin. Mijn vader is advocaat. Mijn moeder is lerares. Karin en ik hebben vier grootouders, opa en oma Beumer en opa en oma Hulst. Mijn vader heeft geen broers en zussen, maar ik heb wel tantes en ooms van mijn moeders kant. Uh, want zij heeft een grote familie. Eén keer per jaar zijn we met de hele familie bij opa en oma Hulst voor de grote re jaarlijkse reunie. Dat is altijd heel leuk. En jij? Heb jij een grote familie? Thank you well. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for asking. All right. So, uh, if there are no other questions about uh, last week, we will move on to the next thing. No? Okay, good. Then, regelmatige werkwoorden, regular verbs in the present simple. So, of course, uh, last week we treated uh, two irregular verbs, uh, the two biggest irregular verbs, hebben en zijn. Uh, but most verbs, almost all verbs in Dutch in the present simple are regular. And so that's pretty easy uh, then. But then, of course, you need to know how to conjugate them, which is what we're going to do today. First, when do you use the present simple in Dutch? Um, so the present simple uh, is used in four cases and, there, and in your booklet. So to refer to a, a momentary action that coincides with the moment we are talking about it. Uh, basically kind of like the present continuous in English. So uh, you also have some continuous forms in Dutch, but uh, uh, if you're saying uh, I am I'm walking to the station, for instance, you could say ik loop naar het station. Ik, yeah. So and instead of ik uh, ben uh, lopende naar het station, like that's kind of similar to how you would say it in English. You can also say it's something like that in Dutch, but if you just say describing what you're doing now, um, that's the biggest one that uh, is different from English. Uh, in Dutch, we use the present simple a lot more. Uh, the second one is to refer to an ongoing habitual repetitive state of action. So if you were uh, sentences with words like always or in the morning, I always uh, like uh, in the morning, I always brush my teeth, for instance, that's in English always also use the present simple in Dutch. Sochtens poets ik altijd mijn tanden. You also use the present simple there. Three, to refer to a future event. If you have like an adverb of time, we'll get to the present, the future simple in a bit as well. Uh, but it's more like a factual statement. So, for example, morgen regent het. Tomorrow it rains, literally. In English, you would probably say tomorrow it'll rain. Uh, but in Dutch, you can say, if you're a bit declarative about what's going to happen tomorrow, you can just say, oh yeah, more gerichted. Uh, and four, to refer to hypothetical if-then situations. So yeah, als ik, uh, rijk, als ik rijk ben, if I'm rich, uh, then uh, I will donate all my money. Dan doneer ik al mijn geld, for instance. 
these are just like the least common one. The most important one is the, the first one. Uh, in Dutch, we more often use the present simple than the present continuous. And you learn the present continuous discourse, so useful to know. Then, how do you make it? Um, this is where I introduce some important terminology that I'll use a lot of time. So bear with me. Uh, if you see any booklet, the, if you want to, no, okay. Let's, uh, if you look at the slide and ignore the title for a, a bit, uh, you can see that uh, in, for the infinitive, uh, for ik, uh, for a, okay, start again, sorry. For ik, um, the correct conjugation is just the stem of the word. And I will go into what the stem is in a bit. For jij and u, the correct uh, conjugation is the stem plus t. It's kind of what we saw as well with heaven, for instance. Like the stem is hep, and then jij hebt. Uh, heaven is irregular because it's not uh, the the person is not the same as the second person, which is normally is it's just the stem plus t. But with heaven, it's heeft instead of hept again. Uh, and then for the infinitive, it's just uh, for the plurals, I mean, it's just infinitive, so that's very easy. So, uh, stem, stem plus t, and in the infinitive. Those are the three things you need to know. That's pretty easy. So, werken, uh, the stem is werk. Uh, werk plus t is werkt. Uh, dus ik werk, jij werkt, hij, zij, het werkt. Wij werken, jullie werken, zij werken. And then, of course, as you, uh, I told you last week, if you have a question with jij, you get rid of the T. So it's werk jij, not werkt jij. Good to keep in mind. Uh, now, this is pretty easy, but the, now, the less easy part, it's not very difficult, is the formation of the stem itself. And uh, as you can see here at the top, I mentioned that the crude stem is the infinitive of the word so, uh, minus en. So you chop off the en, uh, or if there's no en, just the n from the infinitive, and then you have the crude stem. So with werken, if you chop off en, you get the crude stem is werk. Um, what you do then is you apply the Dutch spelling rules, and then you get the, the stem. Uh, in the case of werken, the crude stem and the stem are the same. So that's easy. You can just Add the T, add T, and then create and have the infinitive. Easy. For other verbs, it's less difficult. And for that, you have to follow the Dutch spelling rules. And this is something that I will refer to back to a lot. Uh, so if you didn't catch it this time, it will come up again. Um, and the three, well, there's probably more Dutch spelling rules, but these are the three most important ones relevant to this case. And the first one is that uh, if the spelling of the word changes, you still uh, conserve the, the vowel sound. Uh, what I mean with that is, uh, for instance, we have the verb kopen here, it means to buy, and it's uh, pronounced kopen, uh, not koppen, uh, because the O is followed by a P and then an E. Uh, we had a sudden in the first lesson, right? Then it's uh, an open or a tense or a long sound, you know? Uh, if we chop off the EN, however, then the pronu correct pronunci pronunciation would become kop because we have uh, a vowel, then a consonant, then the word end. And then we learned again in the first lesson that means it's pronounced short. Uh, so then it would be a kop, but that's a different sound than here kopen. And in Dutch, we would like to have those the same. So uh, it isn't, it become, we need to actually add an extra O to make the sound the same. Uh, to become a cop, but a cope. O, copen, cope. These are pronounced the same. Just the spelling is uh, weird. Weird, no, it's not weird, but it's different. Uh, secondly, uh, we don't want double consonants or vowels at the end of syllables. Um, more precisely, but more relevantly, at the end of words. Uh, that's also the end of the syllable. Uh, it's kind of hard to see where a syllable begins and ends if you're not familiar with the language, blah, 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 blah. 
Uh, here's an example, the verb stemmen, which means to vote. If you chop off the en, you get ik stem with two m's. But in Dutch, that doesn't make any difference to the pronunciation of the word. And in Dutch, we would like words to be spelled as shortly as possible to provide uh, to provide the pronunciation. So we just get rid of that m. So we get ik stem, no double uh, consonants at the end of the word. But also no double vowels at the end of the word because those are not also don't add to the pronunciation, right? So stan, uh, if you chop off the en, there's no n, but you just chop off, chop off the n then, you get ik sta, uh, but that's pronounced the same as with one a, and we would like to keep it as short as possible, so we get rid of that a. That's also the, we want to keep it as short as possible, sorry, uh, is also why here, kopen is not spelled with two o's because we can infer it's pronounced as O because it's uh, a consonant and a vowel after it. And so we don't need the extra O. And then lastly, uh, this one doesn't have anything to do with uh, short, uh, short spelling. Uh, the Z becomes an S and the V becomes an F at the end of syllables uh, and also words by extension. Uh, that is because in Dutch we don't like to pronounce uh, voiced syllables at the end of, uh, vo sorry, voiced consonants at the end of syllables. For some reason we do not like doing that. So Z is a voiced consonant. If you hold your hand on your voice box and you say Z, you can hear it vibrating. Uh, but if you say S, it doesn't vibrate. Uh, and I know, we like that better for some reason. Uh, same with the V and the F, um, same pronunciation difference is the voiceness. So uh, what we then get, reizen, to travel, if you chop off EN, it ends on Z, you don't like that, becomes an S, ik reis. Uh, similarly, uh, durven uh, means to dare, uh, like, de like I, uh, or uh, yeah, dare, whatever. Um, the V becomes an F if it's at the end. Also important, the other way around, it, it also shifts. So if you have the singular uh, noun, reis, which means journey, and you want to say journeys, uh, plural, uh, so you would add EN to the end. We get to that at lesson five, I think. Um, the S becomes a Z again. Because at the start of syllables, we do like voiced consonants. Again, I don't know why, but if you see, yeah, you rarely see an S and then an EN. That's I think, basically the message. All right, so I hope that's clear. If not, let me know, because we're going to practice doing this. Um, and I think what's most useful is to do it just in one go. So there's, mm, is it? Now, you know what, what we're going to do? We're going to do this one together, the first one. And then the second one, uh, you'll do on your own. And then we check it. So let's first go here. Um, oh, those are already the answers. Well, that's easy. I, I, I was pretty sure I added like thingies here, but whatever. Um, as you can see, these are just some conjugations then. You could fill in if you want. Reizen, we already discussed that. Becomes ik reis, jij reist, hij reist. Wij reizen, jullie reizen, zij reizen. Lopen, we also already discussed. Ik loop, jij loopt, hij loopt. Wij lopen, jullie lopen, zij lopen. Then fietsen, a fun word, means to cycle. Ik fiets, jij fietst, hij fietst. Uh, so try saying that a lot, fietst, fietst, and wij fietsen, jij, jullie fietsen, en zij fietsen. Uh, rennen means to run, ik ren, jij rent, hij rent, wij rennen, jullie rennen, zij rennen. And then finally, fietsen, verblijven, sorry, I don't do the V, it's an V, but it's an F, because I'm bad at Dutch apparently. Uh, verblijven means to stay. Uh, ik verblijf, 
jij verblijft, hij verblijft. Wij verblijven, jullie verblijven, zij verblijven. So you can, basically all the examples I just mentioned, that was the exercise, right? Except for Pietzen, because that just sounds funny, Pietzt. Uh, do you guys want this to stay up a bit, or can I just go to... Uh, well, I, oh, I, I have a question hmm? about... Um, okay, <laughs> so I've noticed some words kind of do sound similar, like reist, as in rice, and reist, as in this conjugation. Is it, is it, do you, can you hear, is, it, is there a difference, or, or is it just the context that's... Um, oh, you mean shifted? like a reist, as in uh, rice? Yes. Correct. Ah, yeah, no, indeed the uh, IJ, uh, law, the the A or the EI, A, sound exactly the same. There's yeah. no difference. So, yeah, indeed, if you wanted to transcribe what someone was saying and they say that, uh, you wouldn't, you could know which one they meant through context, indeed, indeed. Uh, but you, yeah, you wouldn't per se know how it was spelled. You just need to know which words are spelled with EI and which are spelled with IJ. Unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Good question. All right. Then, if you would be so inclined, could you do exercise two, which is vervoegen, conjugating, more words, and they're all basically in uh, the third person singular, because that's the most interesting case, usually. Uh, I'll give you at most until quarter two, and then we'll discuss. Um, if you're done, could you let me know in the chat? Uh, because then I can kind of keep track, like see if, if almost everyone is done, then it doesn't make sense to wait. Which question should we do? Which task? Ah, this one, uh, oefening two. Okay, thank you very much. I'll put up. Uh, Probably useful to have up here. And if you have any questions in the meantime, please let me know, of course.
Again, if you're done, could you let me know in the chat? I mean, doesn't mean you have to be done already, but. Um, All right, some of you are already done. I'll give you a bit more time. All right. I'm seeing a lot of duns in the chat. Uh, I'll just start. Uh, what's the word? Going over the exercises. And yeah, you can finish a bit uh, in between, I guess. Uh, bam, bam. Ah, look, I put them the wrong way around. That's how it works. Smart, smart, smart. All right. So in this exercise, you just had to conjugate the verb. Uh, and so I will just ask people again, and um, I will also ask you, uh, please translate the sentence as well, to the best of your ability. Uh, if, if, if you can't figure it out, that's totally fine as well. Um, Antonia, could you do the first one? So just le read the sentence out loud and then translate it. Yes, uh, Eric is of the market. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric is at the market. Yeah, he's at the market, very good. Literally, he's on the market in that you would okay. say, but uh, that doesn't make sense in English, obviously. Very good. Um, blah, 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 blah. I really should go quicker through this. Uh, Mona. Yes, yeah, sorry. No worries. He mm -hmm. coped in kilo apples. Yeah. He very buys good. A, kil a kilo of apples. Yeah, very good. Um, Lucia? Uh, yeah. Hi, Fracht. Um, what cost in the bananen? Mm -hmm. So he asked uh, how much the banana cost. Very good. Uh, Hayden. Um, is it hi, Nam? Was it Nam? 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 It's not Nam. Nam? No, it's hi, not Nam. Hi, Nam. Two kilo banana. Yes, very good. Nice. So he uh, he wants two kilos of bananas, or he yeah, yeah. approximately he takes he takes he says. yes. Did did you uh, say num as n a m? Or? Yeah, I don't know why I read it as as num. Ah, well, that's very good. I mean, that's the 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 past tense. So oh, okay. <laughs> you're getting getting ahead of yourself, then. Right? Very good. <laughs> uh, Catherine. Hi, Bet, uh, Bet, Salt, Met, um, Honders, Euro. Yeah, very good. Have you translated? Oh, sorry. Um, uh, he paid 100 euros. Yeah, no, he, he pays with 100 euros. Oh, he pays with 100 euros. Yes. All right, uh, Zoe, could you do the next two? I think that will speed things up a bit. Um, hi, uh, hi, Hub, Queen, 
Clagent. And could you do the next one as well? Uh, he, um, uh, sorry, I don't know how to translate that. Oh, no, no, no that, 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 that makes sense, yeah. Uh, he heeft geen kleingeld, is the correct one. And uh, it means he doesn't have any change. That's why he pays with a 100 euro bill, like an ass. Uh, who did I not ask? Um, Anna, could you do yeah, seven and eight? Yes, uh, Eric has ook naar de haaspoel. Uh, Eric uh, goes uh, to the key. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense that you don't know that. It's a uh, kaasboer means cheese, literally cheese farmer, but it means cheese seller. A lot of Dutch people call people who sell things farmers, not in a derogatory <laughs> way. It's just like a weird colloquialism. Well, also, it also refers to like. Uh, they also do it with, uh, I don't know, like furniture sellers, like a place where you buy furniture, they call it on a meubel boer. In, I don't know why. <laughs> it always bothered me. All right. Um, next. Should have a list that makes it easier. Uh, Jean or Jean? I always forget which one it is. Apologies. Uh, yeah, it's Jean. <laughs> it's fine. Um, hi, Zex. Um, een stuk oude gaas um, graag. Mm -hmm. um, she asks, or no, she says, um, one piece of cheese, please. Is that? Yes. Almost, uh, he, yeah, he, uh, he says, and oh. um, he, he says uh, one piece of uh, old cheese, like oude kaas. Oh, yeah. Okay. Not like that has been sitting there forever, but uh, could you also do the next one, please? Yeah, sorry. Um, the verkoper um, baked ein groot stuk case. Mm -hmm. um, Very good. The seller. Um, the seller gives uh, one one piece of cheese. Is that? Yeah, the, the seller weighs weighs. Oh, weighs. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, you, you don't know all these words, so that makes sense. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then for the final, uh, if some this uh, could do the final three. Um, uh, Maria, could you do the final three? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Eric vindt het stuk de goed. Mm -hmm. um, the um, um fair copper mm -hmm. snipes and kleiner stuck. Uh, that is good. Yes, very good. Perfect. And uh, because you were so kind to do three, I will translate them for you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Eric, uh, Eric vindt het stuk te groot. Eric uh, thinks the piece is too big. Um, the, the verkoper snijdt een kleiner stuk. The seller cuts off a smaller piece. And then Eric says, that's good. So, uh, I can go over the whole thing for you to pronounce it. It's good to have some clear pronunciation. Uh, Eric is op de markt. Hij koopt een kilo appels. Hij vraagt, wat kosten de bananen? Hij neemt 2 kilo bananen. Hij betaalt met 100 euro. Hij heeft geen kleingeld. Erik gaat ook naar de kaasboer. Hij zegt een, een stuk oude kaas graag. De, de verkoper weegt een groot stuk kaas. Erik vindt het stuk te groot. De verkoper snijdt een kleiner stuk. Dat is goed. All right. Erik got his cheese. Very good. Um, yes, then just before the break, unless there are any questions. Yes, there is a question. Hi. Yeah, hi. I have a question like, when do you know if you write it with a double, let's say, A or double E or double A? Because it's not at the end and I was not sure how to know, for instance, fragt or named or betaled. 
How do I know that? Ah, uh, well, if the uh, yes, so if the verb like here, uh, if the verb is uh, written kind of like this, like uh, whoop, with a cons with no, call some consonants and then a one a single vowel and then uh, a consonant and then en. Mm -hmm. Then uh, how you pronounce it is as a uh, lopen, and that's the same sound as the double sound makes. Um, and so if you chop off the en, um, then you have to add in the double uh, vowel because okay. we need to pre preserve that o. And the same is with uh, here with betalen. It's uh, betalen and not betallen, uh, which would be with two l's, I guess. Um, if it is betalen, then uh, it becomes betaald with two a's. And same with vragen and with nemen and with wegen, but not with zeggen, for instance. Zeggen is uh, with uh, number seven. Zeggen has two g's, and oh. so it doesn't become zegen with two e's. But zeggen, where zegt with one. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Cool. All right. Any other questions? No. Good. Then I will quickly go over this and then we can go to the break. So, de versus het. The two articles, uh, definite articles in Dutch. Uh, the, these uh, articles are the equivalent of the, or the, depending on how you pronounce it, in English. Um, in Dutch, we have two, like many languages have. Um, but contrary to like languages such as uh, French or Spanish, uh, de and het are not the masculine and feminine article, but they are the gendered and the neuter article. So de is the masculine slash feminine article, and het is the yeah the genderless article. Uh, kind of like uh, in German, the der die das, uh, de is der and die, and het is das. So how do you tell whether a, a word needs uh, de or het at the start? Uh, well, the fun answer is, yeah, you can't. You just have to learn it. Uh, just like any language that has multiple uh, articles. It kind of sucks uh, that you have to do that, but there's only two, not three. That's good, I guess. Uh, and almost 80% uh, of the articles are de. And only 20 or some or something are hat. So if you don't know, you can just guess the and I change your right. And now, in addition to that, like a uh, rule of thumb, there's also some like definite rules you know you can, can know um, to kind of uh, yeah know whether a word is hat or the. Uh, so these are for always hat. So if the words end in je, uh, then they are diminutives like smaller versions of the word. And those are always het. Those people love using these words all the time. Uh, so for instance, het biertje. So if you are at the bar, you would ask, oh yeah, mag ik een biertje? You would not say, mag ik een bier? That sounds very weird. You would ask for a biertje, small beer. Uh, but you don't per se get a small beer. This is how you ask. Uh, words ending in isme are also always het. So those are usually like ideologies. Uh, you don't really see those words a lot, but they yeah. are. Uh, het communisme, for instance. Uh, yeah, communism. In English, it doesn't have an article, but it doesn't matter. Uh, three, if it ends in um, uh, or um uh, the pronunciation, uh, those are from Latin, and those are also kind of the generalist things in Latin. So, het album, or that's well, another example that I won't spoil. Uh, so, it means the, al the album. Uh, words ending in at, het resultaat, the result. Also always had. And um, these are, this is a bit more complicated, two syllable words that start with g, b, or fur. Those are like uh, unemphasized. So het geluid, the sound, or het begin, the start. Those are always had. Then uh, things are always de, or often de, plurals, uh, things that end in en, or often s. So here you have the, the word uh, organisme, organism. 
which is a hat because it ends in is, isme, but it's a plural when we add an s to it. How you do plurals, we'll get to. So it becomes de organismes, the organisms. And almost always uh, words that are de are words that refer to people, uh, like de vrouw, the, the woman, or de leraar, the teacher. This is not always the case, and all the other rules are supervenient on this rule. Uh, the most prominent example is uh, the word for girl in Dutch, which is meisje, which ends in je. So it's het meisje, which is kind of strange, but it is a diminutive, so that's why it's the case. The non-diminutive version is almost never used, which is like, is meid. Uh, yeah, then the other article, the indefinite article in Dutch is easier than in English. It's een, is written the same as een, the number one, but it's pronounced uh, like unemphasized because it's not very, an, a, an, an, a word that has a lot of emphasis, you know? So it's een, not een. If you say een, then you mean one, and if you say een, you mean a, 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 or whatever. It's the same for all nouns, and plurals don't have an indefinite article, just like in English. So de auto, uh, what it, what, what, I'm, I'm not sure what, I, <laughs> what uh, that example is supposed to show you. Uh, <laughs> That is a plural. I'm not sure what that article, is, that, that, that example is doing there. Uh, but yeah, for de auto, the, the indefinite version is an auto. And for de autos, the plural, the cars, it's autos. So not an autos. That doesn't make sense. Just like in English, you know, not very difficult. All right. Uh, and then a tip, tip from the teacher. If we tell you a word, we almost always want to uh, add the de and het in front. So you know it, but also, yeah, write down the done hat. If you learn a new word, I'm not sure how, if you keep track of that word, you know, or something, but if you do, make sure to write down if it's the or hat, or if you see a word in your booklet, just scribble down the or hat near it. It's just, you need to just know it and you only get it for exposure. Uh, but if you want to speed up exposure, watch yourself. Uh, you can ask me if you are very confused about it, of course. And uh, there's a the and hat app. Not one I made, but it's the one you can download in the App Store or something if you really feel like you want to practice that. All right, that's it. There's a break. Um, let's take 10 minutes. Um, if you can, maybe have a look at this exercise. Just you have to find if it's door head there. It's very short. So that's why I'm telling you you can look at it in the break. Otherwise, of course, I would never do that to you. And yeah, I assume there's not a lot of questions about this. So then I'll see you in 10 minutes. Um, let us return to the slideshow. Yes, so hope you all did the uh, exercise. Um, hope it went okay. I don't have a slide for that, I just realized, but I can just give you the answers. So, uh, Universiteit. Uh, university. Uh, I'm not sure if you if, all, if you got that, but it is de de universiteit. School is also de school. Museum ends in um, so it is het. Bushalte, bus stop, is de. Toerisme ends in isme, so it is het. Bankje ends in je, so it is het. Mechanisme mechanism also ends in isme, so it's also het. Uh, train is a train, so it's de. And then finally, verkeer is a two-syllable word that starts with ver, so it's het, het verkeer. It's traffic. So some of those you could know and some of those you couldn't, but uh, okay. Hi, do you have a question, Sue? Or is your mic just unmuted? Yeah, mic was just muted, unmuted. All right, then briefly some words about the verb gaan. Very useful verb. Uh, well, the conjugation is not that complicated. Just ik ga, jij gaat, ga jij, hij zei het gaat, wij gaan, jullie gaan, zij gaan. And the verb means to go, surprisingly. Um, 
why it is interesting is well, because uh, the lesson is about travel uh, relate, approximately so if you travel somewhere it's useful to be able to say how you're going to how you're going to go there or that you're going to go there at all um, so what ga does is twofold uh, you can you indicate uh, well that you're going somewhere and how you're going there with it uh, or at least you use the verb gaan with that uh, for example zij gaat met de fiets naar huis she's going uh, to home to her home by bike so how you say uh, buy something you say met de or het and then the name of the transport and how you say to uh, in the sense of direction you use the word naar naar they gaat met de fiets naar huis or another example Wij gaan lopend naar de bar toe. So here, lopend is uh, literally walking. And in English, you would say by foot. So wij gaan lopend naar de bar toe. So there's this weird word to at the end. And what that does is, uh, I don't really know, it kind of emphasizes that you're going there. Uh, it's a bit of a weird word. Um, you can al almost always you can leave it out in the sentence is almost the same, but it's just uh, so if you know so that you know what it is. So if you would say wij gaan lopend naar de bar, um, that's just okay. We're going to the bar, and if you say wij gaan lopend naar de bar too, uh, it means more like oh yeah, we're uh, in our journey towards the bar. Uh, we're we're, go we're walking, so it's more the towards kind of uh, emphasis, I guess. Uh, the other use of gaan is in the future tense, the future simple. And how you do that is you use gaan and then you start, uh, put an infinitive at the end of the word that you're interested in. Uh, and that's usually accompanied with an adverb of time, something that indicates that it's in the future. Uh, hij gaat morgen fietsen. Uh, he is going to cycle tomorrow. And as you can see, the order of the words is a bit different. We're going to talk about that a bit more next lesson. But the, uh, the, the infinitive that goes at the end. Hij gaat morgen fietsen. Ik ga vanavond Netflixen. I'm going to Netflix tonight. Uh, it's a verb that's, I think it's in the dictionary by now, Netflixen. Um, and then if you... You can combine all of those together. Ik ga deze zomer naar Japan reizen. So I'm going to travel to Japan this summer. Yeah, useful to know. Um, that's basically it. So now you can say things in the present tense and in the future. Very fun. Um, then. Uh, having things, uh, if you want to say things about the future, it's useful to know some words related to time. And the most common words related to time are, of course, the days of the week. Like if you want to make plans with someone, uh, you say, I am going to, oh no, I can't, I'm going to do that on uh, Saturday or something. So useful to know these words. So let's go over them. Um, I assume I don't have to go over the order of the words in the week, but uh, so Monday in Dutch is Maandag. Just meaning moon day, literally. Uh, moon is man. Uh, dinsdag means Tuesday. I think I don't. Yeah, okay. Uh, din, I'm. Oh, yes, uh, from. No, no, it's not from that. That one is. Uh, Wednesday is woensdag. Woensdag, which comes from Woden's day, which is Odin's day. Donderdag, Thursday comes from uh, donder, means thunder, and just like the English one is related to Thor. So Thor's day. Vrijdag, Friday, is from, this is also in English, is from Freya. Uh, Zaterdag, Saturday, it's not a Norse name, but it's from uh, Saturnus, the Roman god. Zaterdag. And Sunday is Zondag, just literally Sunday, the day of the sun. Then other words that are useful. Um, tomorrow is morgen. 
Uh, oh wait, no, let's start here. Uh, tomorrow is morgen, but morgen is also morning. Maybe a bit confusing. Uh, or you could say in. You could say, oh yeah, in the in the morning, I uh, I don't know, I do things like a productive person. Uh, you can, if you would do that, say that in Dutch, you would say smorgens, and you have this weird apostrophe s and then an s at the end. This is like a very old relic of when Dutch used to have uh, cases. So this was a genitive case, des morgens, uh, but we shortened that to smorgens, and that's what remains. Uh, smiddags means uh, in the afternoon, savonds means in the evening, and snachts means in uh, or at night. Uh, yeah. Or a nacht is just night, and avond is just evening, and middag is just afternoon. You can just keep those separate. Uh, another word for morning is uh, that's not listed here is ochtend. Uh, those basically mean the same thing. Um, but morgen is also used for tomorrow. So you can see the same kind of uh, etymology here, morrow, morgen, very similar. Uh, in Dutch, we have a really useful word that I think is a shame in English is uh, the day after tomorrow, which is uh, overmorgen. I, I, th I think technically in English you can say overmorrow, but uh, then you, know, you sound like you're from 1640. Uh, yesterday in English is, uh, in Dutch, sorry, is gisteren, gisteren. And similar to overmorgen, we also have the day before yesterday, eergisteren, eergisteren. Then, uh, uh, also useful word to know on weekdays, or maybe also useful to know is the word for the, for week, which uh, is not on the slide, but it's in your booklet, which is week, week. So it's pronounced uh, written the same, but pronounced differently. And then, uh, if you refer to days during the week, you say those are, uh, or if you're during busy during the week, you say door de weeks ben ik druk. So during the week I'm busy, door de weeks, it's one word. And then finally, uh, this word we just stole from English, uh, and it's also pronounced pretty similar to English, uh, but then more Dutch, uh, het weekend. So we do pronounce it as a Dutch W, but then we don't we don't say weekend, we say weekend. Uh, we used to say weekende, uh, I don't know when this happened that we just stole it from English, but uh, it is what it is. Yes, so those are words. Very useful. Uh, shouldn't we pronounce the two E's? I'm, I'm a bit confused with that. Uh, could you repeat? Uh, wait, sorry. You, uh, the, my it has a uh, double E. Shouldn't it be vacant? Or something? Yes, indeed. But uh, because this word is, we just took this word from English, we pronounce it sort of oh, okay. like in English. Okay. Uh, indeed, if you would just pronounce it uh, like correctly, as it is written in Dutch, it would be vacant. Vacant. But uh, we say weekend because it is from English, but we don't respect the English language that much that we just keep the W, so we don't say weekend. Yes, and also in Dutch, uh, if you notice maybe, uh, if a D at the end is pronounced as a T, so we say weekend, not weekend. You can also hear that a lot in Dutch people that speak English, uh, probably me as well. All right, uh, then, uh, now I need you uh, to make a decision because we don't have much, 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 that much time because I some technical difficulties at the start. Um, so I pose to you two options. One is to do exercise three, which is a like a pairing up dialogue exercise where you, I pair you up in pairs and send you to breakout rooms and you talk about traveling. And the other is uh, the quiz that I just made. So maybe we can do this. Uh, can you put up the hand if you want to do the dialogue exercise? I see we're with 19 or 20. So if more than 10 people want that, then we do that. And otherwise we do the quiz. I'm not sure if people are, if it's why or uh, it's not working at my end, but uh, I don't see anyone putting up their hand. So that means we're doing the quiz, cool. It's also a lot shorter and logistically a lot easier. Um, just for reference, uh, now next week I will fill this out and put it on the slide so you at least have this filled out. 
Um, yes. Okay, good. Then let me stop sharing this screen and stop recording. <laughs>